Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining. My name is Eric and this video is part three in a mobile app tutorial series for Godot. In the last video we were just setting up the project, but in this video we're actually going to implement the main menu. It's not going to do much, but we'll at least be able to see it and it'll provide a good starting point for future videos. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to UI, this UI node 2D that we added last time, and I'm going to add a child node and we're going to add a label. This is actually going to be the title for the game. So we can actually change this to title and then change the text to I'm going to call it Simplify. That's kind of what I called this project when I first got started with it. You can call it whatever you want. We're going to change a couple of things with the settings for this label. For a line we're going to set it to center and then via line is also going to be center. So basically the text is centered on this node. We're going to change its size to match the size of the app. So 576 is our width. That's basically letting us center it on the app without having to move its position around or change anything about that. So we can change the the Y size to I, I'm not actually sure what it should be so let's let's just do 80 for now and we we might change that in a little bit so we've added text to this label but it's very difficult to see just because we haven't customized anything about the node or the font for the node so I'm gonna show you briefly this website fonts.google.com I did another video earlier on the channel about adding fonts and saving dynamic fonts to use across your projects. Basically, I just go here, I find a font I like, I select it, I download it, and then I add it to the project. So I welcome you to do that. The font that I'm actually using is this guji-regular.ttf. Basically, that's the file format that you're looking for, regardless of the font that you download. And we're going to use that to create our UI. So I'm going to scroll down in this inspector for the label to custom fonts. When I click it, it says I have a couple different options. I'm going to hit new dynamic font. When I click it again, I get these additional options. Settings, we're going to increase the size to 80. That basically made our font larger. And then we're going to add our font data under this font drop down. So instead of new dynamic font data, we're going to hit load go to our fonts folder and then find whatever TTF file you want to use. We're going to open that and then our title has the font, it has the size. The last thing to change is the color which isn't under custom font, it's under custom colors. Select font color and then for the font color you can make it whatever you want. If you slide this around you'll see it change the color. I'm just going to make it a darker, basically a gray. That's, that's as simple as I want to make it for right now. We can play with that later. So we've got the title. And then, well, the, I guess the last thing we can do is move it uh, wherever we want it. But we're going to leave it. We're going to leave it where it is for right now, because we're going to we're going to move this entire UI node down once we have. Well, actually, you know what? I think I think we can move it. Let's just move the title. So position. We're not going to we're not going to move the X, or we're not going to add anything to the X value because we're relying on the width of the label being the same size as the app to keep everything centered so we're just going to move it down let's say y value to 300 I think that might actually be a little too much well that doesn't look too bad it's not quite in the center and we've got enough room here for the start settings and quit button so speaking of them we're going to add another node 2d to the UI node so this is going to be our menu buttons yes so menu buttons later maybe in the next video we're gonna add difficulty buttons that the menu will take us to when we hit start but for now we can just add we're gonna add three button nodes just basic button so you can either add them like this or you can add one and then do command D to duplicate so this one's going to be start, this one's going to be settings, and this one's going to be quit. So those are our three functionalities. You can see them, they kind of popped up up here. They're not doing anything too exciting just yet. We're basically going to add a font to these just like we did the title. 
we're going to do one more additional thing with the dynamic font. We're going to save it so that we can use it on other buttons, mainly these buttons. So I'm going to set the text for the start to start. I'm going to click flat so that it removes that background color. It's aligned to center, which is good. There's a couple other things I'm trying to remember. Enabled focus mode. So I'm going to set enabled focus mode to none for this button. Then if I scroll down a little bit more, we're going to do the same thing we did with the title. We're going to set the size to 576. We're going to change the height. I'm just going to do, I think, 67 in the past. Worked out pretty well for this part. Then in our custom fonts, we're going to do new dynamic font, just like last time. It's going to be the exact same font data, so we can go to font data and then load. Guji dash regular, if that's the one you got. But for settings, instead of making it, I think it was 80 that we did for the other one, we're going to do 60. And we'll be able to see it once we add a font color. Now I'm going to, I'm going to use this color picker. I'm going to click the black bar to choose the color, hit color picker, and then I'm just going to grab the color of the title. So I think that will look pretty good. So now that we've added this, we're going to save it as Guji-60. And I'm just including the size in case we have other fonts that have kind of the same name. We'll be able to distinguish them by font size. But now instead of doing all of that for these settings and quit nodes, I'm just going to actually delete these. I probably should have done this to begin with. I'm going to delete these and then I'm just going to duplicate the start button. So it has all the same properties that I just set up. I'm just going to rename these settings, quit, and then go in and change the text for those buttons. So start to settings and you can see it changing. They're all overlapping right now, but we're about to fix that. And quit. So I've got these three buttons. They're the same size. We want them to be aligned in a column. There's actually a really easy way to do that. We're going to add another child node to menu buttons and it is called VBox Container. So this is just going to align whatever its children are into a column. So if we add this and I think we should be able to add each child node if we just drag it in. Well that's not right. Oh I, okay I think I messed up. So I'm going to, I put that in there and that didn't work right. So I'm going to come back into the button and I change its size back to 576 because I kind of messed that up. So under the VBox container, let's change its size to 576 as well. And now I think it will work if I drag these in. So I dragged in start, I dragged in settings, and then I dragged in quit. And that worked perfectly. So we've got this VBox container set up and the buttons are inside and they're just aligned vertically. That's basically all it does. I had to make sure that I had the VBox container set to the size of the app and as long as the sizes were right on these buttons I think they aligned pretty much perfectly. I'm, I'm very satisfied with that. We can actually run this and just make sure that we can hover or click over these buttons. I'm not a huge fan of changing color on hover or click. If you are you can you can do that under that custom color, we'll look at that. If I go into the button and I come back down to custom color, there are these colors for font hover, disabled, and pressed. I don't really, I'm not, I'm just not a fan of that. So I'm going to change them all to this color of the normal text. That way nothing changes. Pressed, we're going to change that also to this. So I'll show you the difference in what that looks like. So I've only changed it for the start button. So nothing happens. It's still being clicked. It's still working. I'm just, I just made sure that the color doesn't change because that's my personal preference. If you like it the way this looks, you can definitely do that. The last thing we're going to do for the UI is we're going to move this underneath this title. So that's just kind of honestly a little bit of guesswork. If you go to the menu buttons node, go to transform and then position, we're going to adjust the Y position. So we're just going to move it down 350. So that's not low enough. Let's do 400. 
I think that might actually work pretty well. I think that's everything we want to do in this video. In the next video we're going to make these buttons actually do something by adding some difficulty buttons off the screen and then basically when we hit start or hit quit things will happen. You know the app will actually start working. If we run this again just so you can see kind of the end product of where we're at. We've added the title and we've added these three buttons. I encourage you to do whatever you want with the colors of these. After the video I'm going to go in and I'm going to change these colors to the same way I have it set up for the start button. I hope it's been helpful. If you learned something new or just enjoyed the video, remember to hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment letting me know what you think about this series. I want to make sure that it's actually helpful and I'm not just putting out videos for the sake of putting out videos. If you are watching, I want to thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm having a ton of fun making these videos and I want to make a lot more. Next time we'll actually make the game do something, which will be pretty exciting. But for now, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.